in our churches. So if you are reforming, I encourage you to really pray about it because no matter how uh, no matter how much you will try to reform your church, if there is no church discipline, the reformation would be or even it will even be uh, it would even be uh, halted. Uh, si Raymond Manaig, my question. This is Raymond from Kalamba, 1 Corinthians 5.12. What business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? Well, in Romans 14.10, it says, But as for you, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or you as well, why do you regard your brother or sister with contempt? Or we will or appear, appear before the judgment seat of God. Should we judge or not? inside the church of course we should judge remember the uh, issue is in the context in first corinthians 5 as we have said in our lesson uh, brother manaig is an issue of moral absolute this is an issue of public sin uh, morality uh, the case is incest so therefore everyone should agree that this person should consider it sin and so therefore, we should judge this person, those inside, because there is already word in the New Testament how to do this. We have Matthew 18. So in other words, we should judge, judge righteously. But in, first, uh, in Romans 14, the Apostle Paul is uh, talking about uh, those things that are called adiaphora, things that are commanded nor uh, nor uh, prohibited by God. So therefore, what are you going to do with that? Uh, God did not uh, uh, explicitly tell them that's in the bounds of their Christian liberty. And according to Paul, when it is an issue of Christian liberty, we have to accept each other because on the first reason in verses 1, uh, to five, according to Paul, or one to four, uh, Christ has accepted the brother, so we should accept it. And in verses five to twelve of Romans fourteen, uh, according to Paul, the second reason is we will all appear uh, before the judgment seat of God, which, which means uh, I will answer to my Lord. So therefore, he cannot be irresponsible in exercising his freedom because uh, the Lord would. Uh, uh, give an account of uh, his uh, uh, exercise of his freedom. So that is that are those are two different issues. Wow, from GSCF, what should the pastor or elders do to the excommunicated individual for restoration? Should the pastor do some Bible study in his home specifically for his or her sin committed? Uh, this is the problem of many uh, people regarding excommunication. They do not understand uh, the, ex the New Testament uh, meaning of excommunicated or being excommun or, or excommunication. When you excommunicate a person, you remove him from your membership and you consider him as a pagan, as a Gentile unbeliever. So therefore, there should be no need for this person to visit him or to treat him in a way that would be uh, construed as uh, you are approaching him as a member. According to Paul, you have to disfellowship with him. So he's still welcome in the church, uh, but he will be considered as a visitor, an unbelieving visitor. He may be a believer. But the problem is because of his failure to live by the standards of the gospel, uh, he should uh, be considered as an unbeliever, uh, regardless of what his true uh, heart, uh, state of his heart uh, may be. Uh, according to Jay Adams, uh, when he was in a conference in San Diego, California, he was asked by a pastor, should we only dis uh, discipline those members or not? But he was talking to 200 pastors and this denomination does not believe in clear church membership. 
So according to John A. Adam, uh, to J. Adams, he said, no, we should not uh, discipline the uh, those who are not members because we only discipline believers. <laughs> so there was uh, there was uh, a commotion because he just literally said those 200 pastors should be constitutional members of their church. So what does J. Adam said? Uh, he uh, clarified himself by saying that those who are not part of our church should be considered as unbelievers because they consider themselves as unbelievers. So therefore, if we excommunicate a person, we consider him as unbeliever. Uh, we do not even pray for him in the public setting of the church. We do not anymore pray for him in our pastoral uh, prayers, in our prayer meetings, in the stated uh, gatherings of the church because uh, he's not part of the church anymore. And the disfellowship is, would be the medium or the means that God will use to wake him up if he is a true believer. Uh, Ian Perez from uh, uh, SRBC Sabela, since there are sins that are not known publicly, is it okay that the process of discipline be done between the pastor and the sinning brother alone? Salamat po. Uh, well, what I don't know if you are trying to say the formal discipline of the church. The formal discipline of the uh, formal discipline should only happen publicly and with the power of the church. The pastor cannot discipline anyone, but for those who are probably like, uh, uh, if the sin is not yet made known publicly and the brother is already repentant, uh, of course we should not go to the pulpit and publicly confess or uh, uh, bring out the issue because he's already repentant and it would be a big problem if we will confess everything to the church even though it's not yet public. Uh, it would be burdensome for the church every Sunday na lang, no? may meeting na lang. So, magre-report ng kasalanan. So, it, it, it is not proper. Uh, so, therefore, there are some sins that uh, when they are repented, uh, according to Matthew 18, the step one, two, three uh, would not proceed uh, because the sin is repented. You have gained your brother. So the pastor can what the pastor can do, I think, is to for him, for example, under his own ministry, under his delegation, uh, the one he has, he can ask him to really uh, rest first. Uh, from his ministry until such time that uh, this person would really show that he is truly repentant, especially when this sin is uh, involving some kind of serious matters. Uh, uh, Rolando Antonio, the member with sin, not publicly done remember the member with sin not publicly done is is it allowed to take the lord's supper uh those who are only under discipline which means the commit ng public sins are the ones that are being barred uh sa lord's supper because they are not uh under good standing sa church sandy molida good after pastor ramen living bread church so, Rigao, the phrase, whatever you bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Aside from the church discipline, is it something to do like binding Satan as some church had been emphasizing? Uh, no, the, um, uh, the, the context is clearly about uh, uh, church discipline in Matthew 18. So whatever you bind on earth is uh, bound in heaven. So therefore we should, uh, this is far from the, the charismatic saying that they are binding Satan in terms of just merely declaring their words. So uh, the context is about church discipline. Uh, Dennis of CBCD, I believe the scriptures provides how to implement church discipline. First, to take to talk to them privately, 
Second, if not unrepentant, then talk to them with the pastor or elders. Church must be involved if after these processes were exhausted. Is this also applicable for moral impurity? Uh, yes, uh, I, uh, I use in my lecture uh, Matthew 18 in under chapter 3, those sins who are public and scandalous in nature. We, we see there in Matthew 18 the steps in disciplining uh, and you are correct. You have to talk uh, to your brother privately first. So if he listens, you have gained the brother. That's why I told you a while ago that uh, even public, uh, even sins that uh, uh, when it is already rebuked and repented of uh, should not be uh, publicized. Uh, it should be something uh, that would be private because there is already restoration. The intention is not to publicize all sins, but actually just for restoration. Pastor Godoy, uh, this is Joe from Lipa City, who should initiate the disciplinary action in the local church. In Corinthians, it was Paul. And question number two, how the scenic church members should be evaluated in terms of its degree of public and private sin. Well, this is a Good question. Uh, who should in, uh, initiate the disciplinary action in the local church? Well, you follow steps one, two, three. According to Matthew 18, you talk if uh, uh, every member has a responsibility. If they are the ones who saw and has the knowledge of sin, uh, they are the ones first to uh, uh, rebuke that person. If not, the best thing is get another a mature Christian, and you know, in our setting, there's always almost the pastors or elders. So therefore, when the elder, uh, the news has reached the elder, and then therefore we can expect the elder should continually uh, keep the ball rolling on that matter until it will be uh, resolved in the hope that it, he, the person will be restored, uh, not anymore having that excommunication. Now, the sinning church member should be evaluated uh, first by the elders. Uh, this is where you need a, uh, a group of elders or mature people or a singular elder like me or pastor. I always go to Pastor Noel or I go to, to other fellow pastors uh, to ask them uh, what they are doing in this kind of situation. Uh, because there are some things that are very nakakainis or you see some things like uh, it's, it is almost, uh, it appears that they are to be like, uh, they, they are very sin sinful at uh, nakakayamot. But uh, considering the uh, uh, pastoral wisdom of other uh, churches, we see uh, if it is not a clear public sin, uh, therefore, we should err on the side of at least uh, being cautious rather than uh, automatically uh, reporting it to the church. If the sin is already public, for example, I hope not, but in some rare cases, for example, murder or uh, there is this news of uh, uh, marrying an unbeliever. We see it in Facebook or in social media. Then we can already report it to the church because uh, it is already made public. Manai, if the uh, offended brother already forgave in his heart, the offending brother would not would that already be considered a complete process cycle of the forgiveness? The Bible tells us that when you are offended by a brother, tell him. Uh, him of his offense, so on and so forth. If the offender is an unbeliever and such an unbelieving person is indifferent of the sin he has committed, thus the, ask, the process of asking for forgiveness this did not happen as he is not part of the church. Can we say that the offended person has already forgiven the person or he has still has to still confront the unbeliever? Uh, well, ang issue dito siguro is that uh, if the uh, offending bro offended brother has already forgiven, of course, there it should stop uh, the process. But uh, there are some rare issues like criminal cases wherein uh, even though you have forgiven the person uh, with, because of the testimony of the church and the person 
uh, uh, is unrepentant, then therefore the church should pursue even declaring this person as a non-member. But if he is unrepentant, okay? So if there is repentance, uh, there should be forgiveness or there should be restoration. Uh, Joel Gekalaw, paano naman po ko yung co-pastor ang may kasalanan na secret? Dapat po bandalhin sa congregation? Repentant naman siya. Ethical issue lang naman po at hindi immorality. Uh, I don't know uh, what constitutes an ethical issue and if it is not immorality, if it is something that uh, you see that uh, in cases of some uh, with the wisdom of uh, pastors that are already long in the ministry, you can ask them uh, uh, maybe it can stay within your uh, eldership team and the eldership uh, the group of elders should decide whether it is something that uh, is this uh, an issue of disqualification or not if it is an issue of disqualification it is something that should go to the church if not it should remain uh, in them especially if it is already uh, repented of pow uh, suppose an excommunicated individual repent of his or her sins can he apply for another membership application or best be a worker or even a pastor or elder and this is the problem of independentism among our churches <clears throat> if a person should uh, is excommunicated in one church I'm sorry, I have misread your question. If it, he already repented, can he apply for another uh, membership application? Uh, of course, if uh, actually if he has repented, he should be restored to the membership. Uh, on the issue of being a worker and a pastor, that is a, a more controversial issue. Uh, but uh, some positions would be uh, a, if a pastor has already uh, been disciplined because of uh, issues that are uh, cases of disqualification, it is a perpetual disqualification. Some like uh, uh, Piper and others believe on uh, that there are some uh, that there are some rare cases where in the uh, what do you call this the above reproach could be uh, regained because of the grace of God, but not automatically, but th th those are the two positions right now in the evangelical world. But obviously for members, there should be restoration. Pastor Doi, do you suggest to create or form a elders? No, there, there shouldn't. There is no need to form a, uh, a committee because uh, a, a committee or especially if it will become an official office, uh, it, would, it, it would go against the New Testament. The, re, the best uh, move is to pray for a plurality of eldership. You just ask some uh, members who are mature and then uh, uh, you ask them for their wisdom. You ask for uh, any help that uh, you can get but I am not inclined to form a disciplinary committee precisely because these are unordained people. Uh, if you would assign them in a committee and they are not tested or proven, and what if one of them would commit uh, a sin of a public, of na public in nature? It would be uh, a disaster. Jesse from CRBC, can a disqualified and disciplined elder can be restored in the office if his sin is not sexual immorality or if not in the office of pastorate, is he qualified to be a deacon? Uh, well, uh, on the issue of the diaconate, uh, even I, I think the position even of the principal of this institution believes that a deacon can be uh, restored to his office uh, because uh, he has no public uh, teaching office. It is not a public teaching office. But a disqualified or disciplined elder, if his sin is not sexual immorality, but other sins uh, that uh, uh, if his sin is not sexual immorality, uh, it, it would uh, if it is uh, 
a a sin that has this, this uh, disqualified him on other matters. Uh, maybe I should know what kind of uh, sin, uh, because according to First uh, Timothy uh, three, uh, he should be above reproach. Uh, but if this word above reproach has to be regained, for example, uh, he was. Uh, 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 removed from office because uh, of uh, uh, of uh, of a something of a uh, uh, bad decisions or uh, or probably he himself has uh, resigned from the office. It would be a different uh, issue. But uh, if uh, his uh, testimony has damaged him so much, uh, I think it is. Uh, 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 difficult for him to go back to his uh, ministry and again there should be a, uh, a clear understanding or uh, exchange of uh, of uh, of wise counsel on this matter Oh, see, Pastor Nilo, should the offender be present in the church while discussing the public sin? Uh, yes, but uh, please, can you can you ask him to uh, go out and wait for the decision because it would be too awkward. So <laughs> that's what we do in the church. Uh, uh, probably if, if he continues to attend, uh, he should not be included uh, when the church makes a decision. Pao, maybe uh, can you give some things the members could access to that uh, uh, that attendees could not? Uh, yes, uh, for example, covenant meetings, uh, reporting of church finances, Lord's Supper, uh, closed door meetings. Uh, attendees can attend, uh, by the way, in Lord's Supper because it is a proclamation of the gospel, just they do not partake. But on closed door meetings, especially when we discipline someone, we ask uh, uh, respectfully our attendees not to be included in the uh, business meeting uh, because we do not have, they, they are not covenant members. Uh, last na lang siguro to. Uh, Pastor Dennis from CBCD, Pastor can the action of the children rebellion possibly a cause for an elder's disciplinary action by the church? Uh, according to 1 Timothy 3, if a, uh, an elder cannot manage his own household, how can he manage the household of God? So therefore, there is an expectation that elders uh, should be able to manage their own uh, children. But of course, we ask what age? Because if the child is already uh, uh, of age and is already independent, uh, the common answer of many pastors, I think, I, you, you may ask other pastors, but the common issue is uh, if there are uh, this person is still under their custody or he is already living uh, independently of uh, his life because we cannot force a person uh, to choose his religion, his uh, spiritual belief. So uh, while we are disappointed or we are uh, we mourn on that fact that uh, some elders' children are behaving in a rebellious manner, but uh, we have to be fair and to be uh, to, to to give a uh, fair judgment on this matter. Uh, that is why. Uh, if, if he is very young, then therefore, of course, the church is already, uh, the uh, uh, parents are under, uh, uh, they have culpability. Is there any age limit for that? Uh, again, the words that they use uh, is custody. If, if he is under uh, the custody of the parents. And that is what I'm trying to, 
uh, say as a pastor to our church members. You can ask your member uh, children to come to your church, to, to our church, because they are still under your custody. So they can, you can still command them to go to the church because you know you feed them, you give them, uh, they they rely on you. So part of your house rule should be every Sunday we go to the church. But if they do not want that, then therefore they can choose to live their own way. <laughs> Pao, uh, last na daw po. Can a church post the excommunication notice sa page nila bilang public announcement? Uh, yes, they can, but uh, it would be it would be definitely foolish to do so. And you know, you invite uh, unnecessary criticism. It should be among inside among members. In fact, we even tell our members we cannot sinfully. Uh, we can sin we cannot sinfully uh, share this information to others because we expect our prayer that the lord will bring will restore the person uh, eh, baka ma restore but you know uh, the news has already got out of hand alam na ng lahat na immoral immoral siya may naging uh, may nangyari sa kanya may may uh, uh, distress siya or uh, may sexual immorality, it will destroy the credibility or the reputation of the person. And as a church, we should keep those things intact. Uh, the, uh, maaari nga, hindi natin ito ipagsabi. In fact, marami sa mga churches, even Reformed Baptist churches, they, we, they do not even share yung mga, mga nangyayari sa mga members nila na under discipline. Uh, dahil nga maingat, lalo na sa social media. So I, I really go against that public announcement. Uh, if the person is in public uh, ministry, we can announce that he's not anymore uh, the pastor. Uh, daming mga tanong sa church discipline. And, uh, I have... Uh, uh, I understand that this is really an issue, a very practical issue, and that's what First and Second Corinthians really are. So, uh, oh, last na lang before we uh, end in prayer. Uh, by the way, I will ask Pao since uh, brother Pao Peredomes has a uh, lot of questions. No, ikaw ang mag closing prayer, brother, ha? Uh, should there be a time uh, frame given to the offender to repent and make a public apology? Uh, well, repentance should be bismo after, right after the rebuke. And then, uh, based on the fluid naman ng paghahandle niyan, you know, some pastors apply some, uh, uh, there are no uh, hard and fast rules. You can uh, do it in a way that it would be consistent to wisdom. So there should be fluidity. That's why it's better to act in plurality if you're a plural pastors, but you go to other pastors. Uh, what, uh, what I do is uh, uh, my principle, the principle I hold is I'd rather err on the side of being cautious and being forgiving or being... Uh, uh, forbearing rather than being strict uh, as much as possible, give enough time. For example, uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, arrange this matter and then uh, you have to uh, repent of this right now. And then there are times that uh, you should uh, repent by this time or repent now, but you should uh, really publicly come out about this. So. Uh, there are times that uh, I do those. So I hope uh, uh, it would encourage us really to uh, ask for the wisdom of other pastors. Okay, uh, let us 